today we are going to tear this old, nasty, dirty, gross barn out. I don't know how old it is exactly. If I were to guess, I'd probably say 60 or 70 years old. The house was built in 1917, so I'm sure this was built not long after that. Eyesore for sure on the property. First thing anybody sees when they pull up is that right there. Very ugly. Uh, it's about to fall down anyway. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's leaning forward pretty hard. And also, if you look at these back, that back wall right there, it is also leaning pretty good. So we are gonna tear it down. Probably just pull it down with that guy right there and then disassemble it on the ground because I am not climbing up on that roof. Let's go around. Right now the chicken coop is in here too. We're gonna have to tear this down as well. It's the chicken coop, but we got a new one over there. Yeah, look at that angle. She's ready to come down. Probably just rig it up with some chains and straps and try to pull it this way away from the driveway. Try to keep nails and stuff out of the driveway. Yep. So it's been a few weeks since we took the barn down so we decided to move over our trailer and this way it'll be easier to back in and take out as we use it this spring and summer to go camping we also extended our gravel for our parking spaces so now we're able to park more cars um, it's more accessible and how we used to have the trailer it was a nightmare so we're really excited to have easy access to pull in and back in our trailer um and then i am going to go over here 
and also show you kind of our new setup. We've changed it a few times around, but I think we have a good idea of what we're doing now. If you know about farming and you're a first generation farm, it is a lot of trial and error. I'm in our goat barn, um, kind of the goat pen. You can see all our friends here. We have four Nubian weathers, um, a sweet little girl who is due in a month. Um, she is a Nigerian dwarf and we got some fun spools for them to jump on. And then I will show you kind of the barn inside. This is kind of how we have it. I should have waited for a day that we had cleaned it. But as you walk in, we have a hay feeder. We have a bottom and top loft for them to lay in. Um, their loose minerals, where we give them their little grain. Um, usually it's a lot more full of straw, but chickens come here and kick it all around and they're farm animals. So that's just kind of how it is. We have this nice sliding door here. So it just slides shut every morning and night. We open and close it. So they are safe from predators. We definitely still need to put siding on, but for now this works. Plenty of room for these guys. We also have a mini Nubian that is currently being bred about a half hour from home. So we will get her back in a couple weeks. And this is kind of our goat setup. Um, we plan on extending this down our whole pasture line as we get more fencing. And if you're on a farm, you know how expensive fencing is. So we're just doing it sections at a time. They do go in free range around our property with us when we're outside. So they do get to forage a lot. Here is our turkey pen. It is attached to the chicken pen. We decided to separate them because um, they take different feed. And so oh, um, we wanted them to make sure that they were getting the nutrients they need. And we actually picked up this Tom today and we are hoping that he and these ladies will breed and we can have some Thanksgiving turkeys. Um, for our friends and family and for ourselves. Um, we also know that breeding turkeys is difficult. The rate of incubating eggs and them hatching is very low. So they actually sell for pretty good amount. So to be sustainable, to keep the turkeys on the farm is kind of what we plan to do. So we have two ladies, a three-year-old and two-year-old. And then Mr. Tom here is actually only, I believe, eight months old. This is his first mating season, so we are excited to have him here. Um, excuse all our tarps on our trash cans. The goats used to stand on them and now they all have holes. So to keep them from getting wet on the food, we have to do that. But this is kind of what we have right now. The goat pen, the chicken and quail some turkeys and then the ducks are the lucky ones that get to free range out over by the pond over here. So we are learning as best as we can and trying to be as sustainable as we can. This is our chicken area. It shares a fence line with the goats and turkeys. I picked up this hutch here um, while I picked up our near deer and dwarf, um, and I believe I'm going to put some quail in there so I can get some quail eggs. We may also raise them to get meat. And then we have the chicken coop, um, and it's out of level, so we had to kind of stick it up, and every night I just make sure these boards are covered so rats and stuff don't get in. We covered it with netting because they keep flying over and it's annoying to try to cut their fly feather wings. So hopefully they'll stay in the pen and we'll be able to collect more eggs for the season because on five acres, they're laid everywhere and 
I hardly ever find eggs. Okay, so now that you guys have seen kind of where our old barn is, um, or was, and our new setup, I wanted to kind of explain what the purpose is of each animal and how we plan to keep it sustainable and affordable. Um, so the goats, the weathers specifically, being a bigger breed, we hope that they will clear brush more. Um, come spring, everything that we've kind of cut down is gonna come back to life, so it's gonna be nice to have them because they've also already cleared all of this space. When we moved in here, you could only see a quarter of an acre, um, and it was basically the house and a little side yard. Um, so they have done their job, and we wanna keep them, so we decided to bring in two girls and breed them so we have our one nigerian dwarf that is due next month and then a girl that's getting bred right now so she will be due at the end of summer around august september depending on when um she gets bred and so we should have milk year round to have and sell raw milk um, to make lotions to sell those uh, to make cheese butter whatever we want to do it'll be nice to have that milk source as well as an egg source on the farm um plus who doesn't like baby goats um so that will be also a nice thing to do um with the chickens you know just the eggs kind of speaks for itself they give us farm fresh eggs so we're able to sell them give them to neighbors give them back to the community so it kind of pays for their feed and their supplies then um we have the ducks who are going to do really good for garden control and um we have plans to build six more garden beds next to these two. So we'll have a total of eight. So it'll be nice that they're free ranging from the pond and can go there and make sure that nothing's really getting into our gardens. Um, so excited to have that. And then um, the turkeys, we plan on breeding them so we can have Thanksgiving dinner for us, our friends and family and um, turkey turnaround rate is not very high so the poults actually sell for a little bit more than what you can buy ducklings and chicks for so hopefully we'll get a nice breeding program going in some pre-orders for thanksgiving dinners so their purpose is great they also um are good for de like deterring eagles and stuff since they're bigger um we're hoping that that will help with that um, we do plan on, I know how I said we're getting quail, they're also good for meat and eggs. So this will be our first spring at the farmer's market. So we plan to sell our eggs, our raw milk, um, and hopefully some fresh produce. So we are really excited about having everyone here. We do have plans on hopefully, you know, in the future raising and having our own pigs, maybe raising a cow. Um, we have five and a half, six acres, I believe, so we have a lot to grow here, but right now this is what we have started, what we have found sustainable and affordable for us right now before we dive into something much larger. Um, we do also have plans to make a chicken tractor to have our first uh, meat chickens, um, and I think we plan on doing about 20 uh, for our first round and seeing how much food that provides us for this year. And so I hope you guys like and subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and on TikTok, and follow us for more news about how we grow as first time generation farmers. Thank you.